Hello viewers, in this video presentation I'm going to introduce you to programming in Python using the TI Inspire CAS. You can do the programming both on the handheld or on the student or teacher software. So this is available only in version 5.2 and of course if there are any releases later which will definitely be coming up you will have the option for Python but if you have version 5.1 on your handheld or on the teacher or student software this is not going to work for you so if I click 5 and it takes me to the settings and if I go to number 4 it tells me I have version 5.2 so just a reminder that this programming in Python is available only in version 5.2 and later version so let's go and add a new document and uh, you will see right at the bottom now there is an option to add coding in Python so you, we did have uh, the program editors and we could use that for Lua and also for uh, basic but this here is for adding a code or program in Python so let's go and select that and number one is my new code and we are just going to do our very first program so I'll just call it PG rm1 and i'll leave that blank at the moment so we have a screen over here so i just have one page uh, and that's my first uh, program and at the moment it's just 1.1 but when i run the program it will actually create an additional shell page a shell page is where you can write one or two lines of code you can test code but it is essentially for us to see our output so it displays all the results and output in the shell page and every time i run the program it will add the shell page so let's just go into two plus two now at the moment it's not going to give anything if i do control r and it just gives me this empty screen because i want to display the result so what i need to do is go back to 1.1 here and the equivalent of a uh, display in python is print so it's going to print on the screen so if i do print 2 plus 2 it, and if i do control r which is for running the program you see it gives the result as 4 so that's my output there and every time i run this program it will keep just adding a whole lot of light lines over there and it can start looking messy so there's a way to clear that uh, history I'll come to that in a moment so let's go back to our coding screen now if I go into menu you will see it has certain options over here and if we go step by step this is pretty obvious what it's uh, expecting us to uh, do and then uh, this is for running the program so I've been using control R I don't need to really check the syntax because every time I run the program it tells me if there is any error and so on then edit indenting would be will be using very often when I start using the if statements or if I use the for or the when loop so that would happen comment and uncomment if uh, I want to explain some I don't want that to be a part of the program I could just use the shortcut control T and I can add a comment and if I do control T it will then uncomment and then uh, find and replace options you can just go to a line directly and so on so those are some of the options there this is the important bit built in so this tells me how to define a function so with a function there will always be an option to define and then what do we want the function to do so that's going to be the return then there are various controls and uh, this is something that we'll be using very off and uh, if I go back and then operators you will see if I'm storing a value then I will say x equals you know whatever the value is but if I'm actually using equality if I wanted to equal something if I'm running a test then I have to use a double equal to sign I'll explain each one of them when we get to them and uh, the list over here so I can create an empty list I can append things to a list I can find the minimum value for a list maximum value I can display a particular element from the list so we'll uh, be looking at those and then uh, so that's the integer so if I want the input to be an integer value for a real number or decimal value I'll use the float option and then of course rounding off a number to certain number of decimal places the round option string is for text information match so if I'm dealing with complex numbers I'll be using the complex option and uh, that's input and output so print input evaluate and format are some of the ones that we'll be using and let's go to this option here maths if I'm doing any maths uh, calculation and you can see I've got over here constants like uh, pi or Euler's number then all the trig ratios and then uh, the square root and I'll explain all those later on ceiling and flooring and a whole lot of other bits and using the log but uh, 
I can't go x raised to the power of y if I'm using power. So I'll do either this option or the other option is x times times. So double multiplication and we'll get to that as well. This is for random. So you will see the first line for most of these is from random import. So if I want to do any of these, if I want to use any of these in my Python coding, I first need to do run this import. Likewise here, if I'm using the hub or the innovator, then I have to run this import. Likewise for the rover, I have to import the rover and then I can start using any of these options. There are some more modules. This is for complex uh, numbers. And then here we have a uh, time the ti system ones they'll be used often by me as well and you can actually talk to a notes page or a calculator page using um, the option from here and then of course it this displays all the variables that we have so let's get back to our uh, page and uh, what we are going to do now is import one of the modules and i'm going to import the maths module so that's there and i'm actually going to import another module and the reason i'm going to import this module is because i want to keep clearing my screen every time i run the program otherwise you'll see it just keeps putting all the outputs and the shell page can get messy so let's go more modules and ti system and then uh, we're going to uh, ti system which is number three and and then you will see there is clear history. So once I put clear history, every time I do the run, it will actually give me a nice blank screen. So it's under built-ins, and we are going to use the print command. So print three plus three minus four. And you'll see all the operations like plus or minus, they are going in red. And if I want to add text over here, I could do that. So print. Now I want to give it a space so result equal and some space and then because it's got a string and then it's got some numbers there I'm putting two actually outputs in my print so I need to have a comma so now if I do control R you'll see it gives me the result equals two now if I ran the program again so if I just do control R it actually has run the program again but it clears the screen for me if I go back over here and I change one of these numbers and if I do control R it gives me the result as 6 so that was just a very very basic program that we wrote so you can actually have any input over there so I could say over here my number is and if I do control R, you can see it says my number is six. All right, so let's go and write the first program now. And we are actually going to do the quadratic formula. And for the quadratic formula, we require the coefficients of the x squared term, the x term, and the constant. So we will require a user input. So menu, and oh, let's go and add a new page altogether. So let's do control escape. So control talk and uh, okay we'll uh, add a new program and I'm actually going to this time use the maths calculation option so then in this case it will put the import option there automatically so I don't have to do from math import it will actually have it there because I've selected that program so let's go and call this as a, I'll call it quadratic roots one I'm putting one over there because I'll actually give you another method to get the quadratic roots. All right, so let's go and click OK, and you'll see actually it put from math input over there. Now I want a user input, so menu and then built ins, and we will go into input, and that's number two. So we have an input, but I need to call this input something. So I'm going to call this as a. So it's the coefficient of the x squared term. So input, and uh, this could be an integer value or it could be a decimal value. So I'll actually use the option, which is float. So the moment I put float, what it means is I can actually input an integer value and so on. So that's input and uh, the user needs to know what we are uh, expecting them to do. So let's say enter coefficient of 
x squared term and once we progress with this I'm actually going to give you a better way where we can enter this on the notes page or the calculator page and get the coefficients from there. So the number that the per person will input will be saved as A. So let's go and copy this. So that's control C and then uh, just go to the next line, control V and let's call this as B and that's just the X term and yes that's B. And let's do the same for C. Alright, so now if I run the program, it should ask me for some inputs so of control R, enter the coefficient of A. So let's say, alright, so now I'm going to run the program. At the moment, you see I've got 1.3 there, that's my page number. But the moment I run the program, it should add a shell page where I'll see the output and that would be 1.4. So if I do control R, so you see I've got 1.4 and that was 1.3. So now it's asking me to input a value for A, so I put 5, input a value for B, let's go and do 6 and let's say negative 5. Okay. So it's not going to do anything because I haven't given any further instructions. So let's go back to our uh, page here and uh, let's go and calculate the discriminant. Now this is not an input, so this is just a calculation. So I'm going to use the letter D, which equals, this is where you will need to be careful. I can't use B square. It's not going to give me the desired output. Okay, so what I need to do is go b times times 2 so i need to use the multiplication symbol twice and then go minus and 4 a times c and we are going to actually display the discriminant so i'm going to do print and i do want the word discriminant because the user should know what i'm printing out so let's go and say the discriminant is and then put comma and we want to output the value of d which it has calculated okay so let's do control r it will run the program and you'll see the previous information is there and it will just keep adding to that and that is why i go and add the clear history page because every time i'll run the program i'll get a clear page next time so let's go and just calculate the discriminant for this so five three and let's go and do negative two and it says the discriminant is 49. Let's go back here. And now I don't want to see that each time. So let's go back. Probably use my keypad. It's actually better doing that. So menu and uh, A, which is more modules. And then system module is 3. And then I want to go to number 1. So I'm adding that module. So we'll just go and add a line of code to clear the history. So I'll go into menu and then I'll go into more modules, which is the letter A. And then I know that I need to go into the systems, which is number three. And then I just go to the letter B, which will give me the option to clear on the screen. So that's the clear history option. And now what will happen every time I run this code, before it runs uh, any of these subsequent lines as a program, it will clear the history. Often what may happen is that the discriminant may run into several decimal places. Now, if I don't want to see that many decimal places, what I could go is just click there and go into menu. So menu, so which is under built-ins, so number four and then number five. And then you will see an option number three, which is round. And now I need to just go and put D there. Now I can specify the number of decimal places. So I can go D comma two. Now, if I don't put the number of decimal places there if i just write uh, d uh, under brown so what it will do is it will actually round it off to the closest integer which is what probably we are interested in because we want to know whether the discriminant is greater than zero less than zero or equal to zero so that should suffice and make sure that we have the same number of opening and closing brackets now if i do that code let's say 3.5 and 
two nine and you will see it rounds off the discrement with negative 122 so it's going to tell me this particular one will actually have no solutions or it will have actually imaginary solutions now i can do something very similar with the axis of symmetry so if i want to print out the axis of symmetry i can just go and copy this and i'm going to paste it underneath and then replace the text uh, text so just change that to the axis of symmetry is and uh, I'll get rid of the round feature for the time being we'll just uh, get the actual value which should be negative b by 2a so clear that negative b divided by 2a 2 times a so make sure I enter the time symbol and then do control r we'll just run this uh, code so I'm going to put a as 4 b as 7 and c as negative 9 and now it gives me the axis of symmetry now I can go and actually add the round feature so that's what I'm going to do next so built-ins and then go under uh, types and then round and uh, just copy this everything and put it in the round bracket so we'll paste it there and then we'll round it off to two decimal places and now if I run the code so we'll go and put some values for a b and c so let's go and uh, put a as 2.5 okay so it should run into decimal b as 4 and c as uh, 3 and the discriminant is negative 14 and the axis of symmetry is negative 0 0.8 so now we are actually going to put some if statements because if the discriminant is greater than zero what should happen likewise if the discriminant is less than zero and so on so we are going into uh, built ins and we go under controls and you will see the if conditions there and in this particular condition because there are three possibilities i'm going to use the if else an if statement and you'll see that the columns are very important and that's why it's better to pick up the template so this is where the condition will go and this will be the result if the condition is met and if this condition is not met it will jump to the next else if block so the first thing we are going to put over here is if d is greater than zero so if d is greater than zero and you'll see it picks up in right so that's the condition and we'll say it should have two roots so the first root i'm going to call this r1 and we are saying r1 equals and you'll notice something it's already indented itself now if i don't put the indent the code won't run so indenting is very very so once again i'm just going to type the word round although i can get it from there so round and then negative b and uh, we are going to put plus or minus the discriminant so minus the square root of the discriminant so if i go into menu math and then I pick up the square root from there and D to close the bracket and what we need to make sure is that this is divided by 2a and I'm going to put that within the bracket as well so 2 times a it's important that we have the correct number of brackets and we're rounding it off to two decimal places so I've done that and hopefully I've got the correct number of brackets then we'll run the code and we'll know so copy this and uh, so so what I may do from here on is just paste all the code that I would be requiring. So I've just pasted that and I'm actually going to explain what is happening with each one of them. So I uh, had stopped there. So this is my second root. So instead of minus, I'm just going to put plus and the condition is met. So I have two roots R1 and R2. So now here I'm saying print the two roots. So because that's a string that goes in green in within inverted commas, comma, the first root and again that's a string and then we are saying the second root so that part there is the first condition being met so the first if condition is met that is when the discriminant is greater than zero now in the next part we are moving to the second condition what if the discriminant equals zero so the e value equals now i just can't put a single equal to sign if i was to run this code it will give me an error because that's storing it so i've used the double equality sign we are saying equal to zero so that's the discriminant equal to zero in that case the root would be negative b divided by two times a and i'm just going to print this is a repeating root where x equals the value r that we have stored so that's going to print that out if that condition is met if both these conditions are not met and what that would mean if the discriminant is less than zero we are saying print no real roots now this is where it gets interesting 
it's going to have complex roots so i'm going to actually create another input for the user if there are no real roots do you actually want to see what those complex roots look like so this is an input so the single equal to sign so the input is would you like the complex solutions the letters of y and n now this is case sensitive so if i have put capital y then the user has to enter capital y or capital n actually if uh, it doesn't enter capital and anything else it will actually read that as no but capital y is going to be the important part so if this value cs which i'm storing equals y so equal means i have to put two equality signs so that's my second if condition now because we are talking of complex roots so i did a c import and i'll show you where i can do that from and it should come over here i shouldn't put it in the beginning because otherwise it's going to do the whole calculation with c mass import so i'll just demonstrate that again how i could get that so if i go into menu and more modules which is the letter a and you'll see the first one is complex and the very first thing is from complex import so you'll see i've imported that twice so i'm going to get rid of that so that's how you could get the import there okay so, and what is more important as i mentioned over here is the indenting part so once again it will have two roots r1 and r2 and same bit over here now i'm not using the round feature over here because it won't work together because this is going to have a real part and an imaginary part so i'm going to store this again as root 1 new and root 2 new and uh, i've just rounded this to two decimal places now because we are taking r1 the real part i'll once again show you where do i get that from so i'm going to get rid of that for the time being and go into menu go to complex uh, so more modules and go to complex maths and you should see an option real dot real so root one and then real value so that's how i get real and i can do the same thing for imaginary so get rid of that from there and go to menu and once again more modules go to complex and go to imaginary and that's the part there so i got dot img and i've done the same thing over there now this has to be done separately because we have a real part and we have an imaginary part so i've rounded these to three decimal places and i've multiplied this by one times j now instead of the letter i for complex we in python use the letter j so this should give me my roots and now i'm going to say print the first root and the second root if you want you can actually put that as x1 and put that as x2 and probably you can go and do the same thing over here if you want x1 and x2 so those are my roots there and that should have been x2 you can just leave it as x as well it doesn't matter okay so those are my roots so first root and my second complex root and then else we just say thank you so now let's go and run this code so control r and let's go and put the value that's 4 negative 3 and 2 and now it's saying do you want to view the complex roots and capital y and that's my input and now it gives me the roots and you can see uh, those are uh, kind of symmetric about the line 0.375 so axis of symmetry is actually 0.375 but because i rounded it off to two decimal places it's got it as 0.38 all right let's run the program once again so control r so all right let's run the program once again so control r and go to one and let's say seven and twelve and it gives me the discriminant is one so two solutions axis of symmetry and the two roots are there okay now let's go and improve this program so let's go to menu and uh, under actions we'll actually go and create a copy and let's call it qr2 so now we're going to work on qr2 and what we will do is get rid of this part we are actually going to receive this input externally and we'll actually get this input from a notes page so let's go and add a notes page so control document and a 
notes page. So I'm going to create a maths box there. Okay, so we have added a maths box, and in the maths box, I'm actually going to define my quadratic. So let's go and say x squared, say minus 7x plus 12. And let's go and store this as f. Okay, so that's stored. Now we know I can get the coefficients. So menu, calculations, and go to algebra, and we go to polynomial tools, and we get the coefficients of the polynomial f. Okay, and if I do that, it gives me the coefficients. Now I'm going to store this, and let's just call it c f. So coefficients. So it's stored. And now I'm actually going to go into my Python code and uh, get these values from there. So you will notice I've already got the TI system import because I used it for clear history. So, so let's go to menu and uh, go into more modules, which is A, and go into the systems, which is three. And this time we're going to actually recall the list that we have stored. So that's number four. And let's just call it CF doesn't matter what there is and that's CF as well now this is something uh, that you have to remember the indexing actually starts from 0 so it's 0 1 and 2 so it's not going to be 1 2 so a and a B and C are the coefficients and they will be actually picked up from the list that we have recalled so if I go CF and just reminding you that the indexing starts from 0 in Python so that should be CF 0 and then that should be a 0 not O and then uh, I need to do the same for the other two coefficients so that should change to 1 and that one there should be 2 and now it should actually pick up the coefficients so if I do control R it should uh, and the program so it says that discriminant is negative 28 axis of symmetry is 3 no real roots so if I do y and now it gives me this so what uh, you would also notice is I can actually write the quadratic in the turning point form it will still pick up the coefficients I can put it in the factor form it will still pick up the coefficient so if I change that to negative 4 and if I do enter it changes the coefficients and if I go to the program if I run the program and uh, there we get the now if I go and change it to the factor form so let's say that's one of the factors and if I go time so it should pick up the coefficient straight away so x minus 7 and if I click enter it's picked up the coefficients if I go here control R so axis of symmetry and it's picked up the two roots so that was our first program uh, on the quadratic formula in the next few days, I'll be writing a few more programs using different modules. So I'll be putting up some more videos and uh, probably every second or third day, there should be a video for the next few days. And this will help you pick up some coding in Python on the TI Inspire.